Okay, I'm there. Um, I should have uh, sent the link on the Discord. So if you want to join the live stream uh, audio, I have this channel uh, shared. Mm, I'm just checking if I can see the chat. Um, okay, I got the chat.
Okay, it seems it works. Hmm. Okay, does it work? Don't know if you have the audio. It's running. It seems it's running. Waiting for some participants. I should buy another screen probably to get also all the layouts. Okay, so anything, anyone. Anything anywhere? Mm -hmm. We we'll just check this if it works. Uh, so selecting two meshes and trying to make the magic happens. So selecting this, this, pressing the Q key, and start unwrapping this. Okay, it seems it seems to it works. Okay, we have the packing automatic. We didn't have the auto hide. Uh, I'll check this on and see what's going on. Um, so again, uh, planar mapping on the Z axis. It hides the other polygons. It works nicely. Okay, so let's see. I will start to select the polygons to unwrap and we will start to use the unwrap tools with the auto loop just basic rectangle okay it seems pretty good we'll do this over there as well here i'd appreciate if the, i can get some participants in the disco be better to entertain okay so now that i have those selected i will also select here just two polygons every time to get a, an auto loop selection okay it seems to work and we have also those and then with the magic happening i will use the Smart unwrap rectangle and auto loop rectangle. Okay, it works. We have someone joining on the Discord. Okay, Volker Troy is coming. Hi, Volker. Ah, you probably have my sound, so it's creating some echo. Maybe the push to talk is better. Welcome. I. You should try uh, to talk and see if I hear you correctly. Actually, I'm just hearing my own voice. Okay. Hello. So does does the stream is uh, is going nicely in terms of uh, resolution? 
Just from the wing. From the wing. No microphone, probably for you. I have to check the the stream chat. Okay, I have the chat on the side. If he wants to ask me anything, I'm just actually try, trying to test the the UV tools uh, with the multiple um, mesh selection, and it seems to work. So let's see. I will do this with a rectangle again, but now with that auto loop. Hi, Arthur. Nice to get you here. Yeah, also, it's working. Uh, I have two meshes selected and I have the auto packing uh, enabled on the side, and everything is straight as as I wish is. it should. So it's, it's running fine. Um, so yeah, just one thing I was thinking about talking uh, here is, for instance, you have this kind of mesh where you have this area uh, to um, unwrap. And so from the point of view, probably the best solution is to select the polygons over there to remove the seam from the visibility of the, of the exterior, all right? So if you select over here and to, uh, and unwrap uh, auto loop rectangle. Okay, I have to check and select only one as I'm not unwrapping on the other. So do this again. Ah, oops, I have two meshes. Okay, one mesh is, is okay. Okay, so if I do this, I have the seam over here. You see, as you can see on the side, the two different polygons are on the on this area, so it means that the seam will be, will be visible. So probably the best solution is to select instead those two over here and do the unwrap from this. This way you can hide the the joint, I mean the, the seam, uh, the seam uh, connection. This is really simple, but a good trick to remember. Don't hesitate to to ask on the. Are you talking on the? Oh, we have. We have two person actually. Don't hesitate to ask if you want to talk about specific functions in in Monster. Okay, so I will just unwrap those as they're been selected already. Um, auto loop rectangle. Okay, so. As I have the auto hide, it's much faster to uh, manipulate and uh, isolate the different part that I've already uh, unwrap. I will probably do this on one one stuff uh, instead. It will be much simpler. So yeah, doing this kind of uh, unwrap is really simple. Just doing a bunch of selections and doing the loop selection automatically without even uh, pressing the L key to loop. Oh, something is going on here. Let's see. Mm. Ah, I need to get this texture, the UV texture selected. It was this. Okay, do this again. Okay, so as far as I'm using the tools, as you can see, it's removing those from the view. So it means okay, they are done. Now I can concentrate on the next one, on the next part, etc., etc. It's really streamlined. Let me know if um, if the music is too high as well. So it's working nicely. So I can do this, can do that. Let me know on the Slack uh, if you can. Uh, all the stream is is um, broadcast. Uh, actually, I don't know if the 
resolution on if the bandwidth uh, is okay you can let me know uh, i'd be happy to to know that Ah, the auto loop rectangle is probably one of the best tools because also it's it's one tool that can let you orient uh, the the faces i mean the bunch of poly strip always uh horizontally but of course you have a solution to uh, change the orientation so for instance if i press the q key here oh, okay i have to check my key mappings because i've changed those okay i'm setting them all again and with the q key over here okay i have now a smart orient vertically or horizontally so for instance if i do this of course i oriented uh, all the, po the poly islands the uv islands uh, vertically but one thing is great with this with this smart, uh, with the smart one is that the smart orient is working as well uh, in polygons and in uh, edges so for instance if i select this one and this one and do again but this time horizontally it orients those horizontally as well in edge mode so whatever you choose uh, it's working uh, from edge to polygons of course vertices is not something you will work with but yeah edges and polygons it's working Okay, so again, even if you unhide things, uh, they can uh, be shown back, uh, of course, we, if you press the U key uh, for unhide. But as long as you start um, again um, unwrapping things, it automatically hides things. But as well, as I said, you can change this over here. So pretty simple. Uh, we'll do this group normal. So you have different kinds of, um, I mean, different ways to uh, unwrap things. Um, okay, so I will add this. For instance, I will select those over here. And now I will do this with an unwrap. But you see here with the smart production unwrap, you have different bunches of uh, solutions. You have the rectangle, vertical, and horizontal directly, and you have also an unwrap with the auto loop and the regular uh, rectangle unwrap. And as well, you have the two uh, others that are much more for, um, I can say, organic things. Okay, so characters and uh, creatures, all that stuff. And so you can use the group normal, and then you can choose whatever. Uh, the production is I mean, in the different method um, you want so conformal or on the based and you have the, the result after that uh, visible here so i press the q key here and i will open back uh, the uv tools so here uv tools and check over here so when you press the q key you have one menu in the viewport and another menu uh, on the UV screen, but you have the smart uh, orient vertical uh, over there, as well as other presets. So, for instance, when you are working with the UDIMs, you can just uh, switch to a different layout. So this one is for this layout, and this one is for the layout of the UV UDIM. Um, you have other kind of uh, commands as well uh, for the the copy and paste UVs. Uh, but I'm not that much uh, using it now. Um, and the uh, Texel Density Palette, for instance, to call. But here we will just uh, normalize and pack things. And as I click, even if uh, you have some flipped, um, some flipped uh, areas like that, okay, so we have a flipped UV island. Once we click on the normalize and pack, we have different options uh, here. If I press the control key, I can change the mode over there. So you have everything in the tooltip, right? So if I left the mouse over, you have some information on the what what are the different options. And here, if I press the control and click, I will just repack with the same texture density 
as you can see everything is matching in terms of density of uvs and it automatically uh, flipped back uh, correctly the uv so if you did it once of course you can probably totally do it do this um so for instance if i do that and just press normalize and pack it keeps this flipped okay uh so that's good for that okay so i can switch of course uh, with those different commands if i want to flip things on the u or on the v yeah so that's really simple that can be useful sometimes when you have to deal with text and things that are maybe mirrored um okay so let's see we will continue with this we will hide the rest um what i can say about this um okay so the the logic behind uh the tools with the uv kit is that you are using the the local production of the object um so whatever you have uh in terms of meshes and orientations the projection will al always uh, match the orientation of the of the mesh so this is also why the good things with this is that uh, you have something that is straightened correctly so for instance okay if we hide this we clearly see that the, the center is correctly aligned with the mesh and so when you, you have a projection the projection is correctly oriented it's not tilted like this or something like that right so this is perfectly fine for this uh, and especially for the mechanical parts like that so of course you have different uh, options uh, let me see i will show other stuff so here we have the options of the different variable uh, into the kit and so you you have for instance an auto relax uh, uvs when you are unwrapping things it was not uh, implemented in uh, Modo uh, at the start. Uh, on the 15 release, I think it was implemented uh, as a built-in uh, feature, but it was not uh, on the 13 and 14. So I've made this as a script as well. And so, um, so when you are repacking, of of course you can fix the flipped UVs and you can also auto repack uh, the unwrapped. Uh, the recently unwrapped uh, areas and you can also relax uh, automatically relax so for instance if i do this and say okay i will select all the uh, bound, uh, boundary um, edges of this of this over here and maybe cut over here i will do an unwrap so a basic unwrap with the basic tool uh, in model of course it creates this right and so you might want to have a pass that is relaxing uh, the faces. So as you can see, it relaxed pretty well. It didn't stitch those, of course, but yeah, the solution is there. So um, you have the solution to use the edge selections uh, mode. And so when you are like this, you can uh, press the, for instance, I will hide the rest of the elements and do this again select the edges and this one and then i will press the q key unwrap and i will use a group normal conformer so you see as i didn't uh, check the auto relax uvs i have the same result as if i was using the regular uh, unwrap without the auto relax uh, implemented so i will do this again now okay and so with this enable the auto relax uvs i will do this again and now you see that this have been uh, relaxed it's on the opposite side this this time yeah but it works so you can define the amount of iteration of the relax if you have something that is a bit too big uh, in terms of polygons so cat data or things like this it can be uh, useful to change the amount of relaxed iterations uh, but so uh, we can merge this or even yeah as i said 
project this onto the Z axis. And if I project on the Z axis, it will use also the Y and the X as direction. So yeah, the unwrap this way is really great. Um, okay, it's running. Ooh. Something might be not good here. I have to check. Hmm. This is the problem with the streams. <laughs> okay, I, I will check this again. Probably something that is um, related to the the fact that I've uh, added already some parts and it was already unwrapped. Uh, so I would check this again. Let me see. Um, we'll start again model. Is there anything you need? Um, Volker or Arthur? Ah, you are mute. I have to check this or... No, apparently not. You can. You can probably... Ah, I need to define a role. Okay, so if I check... Um... Ah, I heard something. Arthur. I hear you. I just, I was, uh, <laughs> Good. Put some background music. But that, that's reality free, so I can use it probably. It's okay. Okay, so I've restarted again model. I will probably load again the seen did you have any questions out here um i think for me i'm still just trying to um, understand the whole process because i come from the cad world okay from the cad world okay I've so been doing this for a very long time but it's still great to see some of the tools that you are adding to help optimize the workflow Okay. Um, just one thing, probably uh, for care. I hear you, but I also hear some echo. So it, I would prefer you 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 mute your uh, or you switch to a push to talk. If you can. If you can. <laughs> okay, I will load the scene for the cat cleanup tools. Um, no. Okay, let's see. Um, this is not probably the best solutions. But I will show you this. Okay, so what we have here, uh, I will switch to the full view. Okay, so um, here I will work on to the cat cleanup and gone so uh, a long time ago two years ago i was uh, creating I, I re i've released the the cat tools uh, for optimizing things like this so you might have sometimes uh, objects that are um, coming from cat data as triangulated uh, items like this and so you might have also the beaver and all that stuff, but sometimes not. And so in, in order to change this and my own uh, activity mostly is not about rendering uh, of CAD data and product design uh, renders, uh, but more um, real-time um, AR um, content. So for AR and VR content, so basically reducing the poly count and, and editing the, the mesh. Uh, so usually what I do and what I was doing uh, with the with the cat tools was to use the the cleanup tools that were, was there. So usually 
I was able to clean up the, the end guns and find back the end guns on the XYZ uh, axis. So for instance, this one is already oriented, right? But so if you have something that is um, in a different, I can say, uh, orientation and rotations, uh, you can probably didn't use this, but that's the faster fastest one. So when I select the object and then I click on here, it will it clean up uh, the end gones here normally. I didn't see anything. Oh, something is done over here. Okay. That's probably because I've implemented the other the new west one. What I don't understand is that I didn't see the selection. Let's see. Yeah, the show selection, but I cannot select things here. What's going on here? Mm hmm. Uh, okay, close all. Again, the training scenes are there. Card. Clean up tools. Okay, now I see the selection. So I can select this and launch the process. And as you can see, now it added already the sides object. But here now we have everything that, is, that was flat on the XYZ directions have been merged in terms of polygons. So it's much more easier to edit and just select all of those directly like this and edit things, right? So you have uh, this solution, but you have another one that is <clears throat> a bit more expensive in terms of processing, but that can also fix those uh, polygons as well. So those are not uh, in the right direction on the Y uh, zero one. I mean zero one zero direction vector. So it's not working with this one. That's an old solution. But I was using just the detrangulate um, after that to get this kind of uh, model. So it's a lot easier to manipulate and edit, but you still have some kind of things like this, right? So probably the, the best one, um, I should say, is to try the second one, the latest uh, solution. It is not part of the CAD cleanup tools. Um, but you right click on the items with just one, uh, one selected uh, item and you uh, go to uh, small GC. So that's for the game content, GC, and simplify to end gone. And it will process, it will take some time, but it will process every uh, polygons and detect the coplanar uh, polygons and then merge the, the, those elements. So here it's probably taking some time. We will, you normally uh, see the progress bar, but I'm, I'm sure it's not completely uh, rushed. Actually, it's just processing. Yeah. And so, yeah, every polygons will be cleaned up this way. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear. Yeah. So, like, a lot of the original, like, data that sometimes I would start with sometimes, I would say, initially was from solid, solid work. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the best part about that was that because the rendering engine inside of SOLIDWORKS and the materials um, what I would do is I would um, ahead of time at least apply uh, colors or, or textures in SOLIDWORKS yeah then become material tags mm -hmm. inside of Modo um, and that's that's just one workflow for for simply okay. SOLIDWORKS but then I get files from like Rhino or Inventor, and you didn't have that workflow from SolidWorks. Um, but that that was one of the things that I also over the years noticed, like because there's a there's a there's this there's a hierarchy in SolidWorks that doesn't necessarily translate one to one into Modo. So in other words, 
if you um, apply a, a red color to the whole geometry, mm -hmm. that is like level one. But if you apply it to a feature, that's like level two. If you apply it to a face, that's like level three. So like the different hierarchies would override the one below it. Okay, there is some kind of uh, priority uh, organizations. Yeah. Okay. And that's not something in Modo that, like, let's say, for example, if you're in item mode and you apply a material, but then let's say, for example, you go into polygon mode and you apply a material. Okay. There doesn't seem to be that same hierarchy. Like, the, whatever is applied last, mm -hmm. not that the item overrides the the picking of the polygon face to apply the material those are one of the things that like you know just trying to figure out how to optimize cad data into moto workflow um your, your you probably data. have some kind of a parts part tag so when you are working with the with the the textures i mean the material them, themselves materials can be assigned with different ways you can use selection sets you can use polygons, uh, polygon material tag, and part tags as well. So, um, okay, so uh, let, let me just uh, talk about this first and uh, we will switch to this uh, in, in two minutes. So as I can as I can show you here with the simplify to end gone solution with the game content, it's a bit different. And so those kind of things that were uh, still present with the old solution, and those end guns that was was not correctly aligned to the to the x y z uh, uh, axis, those are correctly processed. So now it, I mean, yeah, it's much better and much much easier to edit this, as well as those you have still uh, uh, a bunch of poly poly loops that can be selected. So some of those cannot cannot be uh, treated and processed because they have some a little. Uh, differences in, in terms, I mean, they are not coplanar totally. So yeah, uh, that was one of the, the, the new tools that I've uh, added with the, the release number four. So it helps uh, simplifying the, the, the different pieces. You can as well, uh, for instance, here, what I've made uh, also is uh, you have the cleanup and the batch tools that can be maybe useful for you uh, let me see um i will pause all here and open the batch one so you have this kind of package icon over there and when you open this you have different uh, tools in order to load so for instance you, you talk about solidworks right I have a loading preset uh, for the SOLIDWORKS and so it will load the file and do different kind of actions and process uh, and after that it will save the data as a, an elixir. It can save to other output, right? So here we have the basic UI, you have also the preferences where you can define different variables and the good things with, uh, with the kit that I've made um, and in order to bring also the others um, tools from other uh, third-party developers like Quad Remesher from Remy uh, uh, from uh, Maxim Ruka, um, you can enter a command that is related to a kit, and it will process the data. So, for instance, here we have a preset. So I've made a preset that is just basically you input. You define a folder with a DXF file and you output this to an Elixir file uh, in a subfolder called Elixir, right? So it's really simple, but it can help a lot. So for instance, if I do SOLIDWORKS uh, SLD PRT file conversion and cleanup, I'm just loading the file, the SOLIDWORKS file into model. So one at a time, okay, so we can split it, split it up or get some files from the client that are splitted uh, into different files. But you are loading the, 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 the SOLIDWORKS files, then you can process some data with this. So the, the cleanup 
um, SolidWorks uh, import. I will just open probably the code because that's much more simple to to check. But um, there is also one thing that you can do if you didn't know what what a command is is doing in in my in my own kits. So you can open the command history and in inside the commands you can filter with a pattern and you can just paste the pattern with small uh, for for the sponsor or small look and then the kit and uh, point cleanup point and then you have the the rest of the different commands so if you do this you will get the description on the side so that can be interesting for uh, having some information on how it works uh, so this one is yeah you you clean up the solidworks import um, so this this was uh, one example with um, files from the MacMaster website uh, data. There's a bunch of different CAD data uh, from SolidWorks on this website, so I started with this. And um, and as it says, uh, in order to save uh, a new scene with only one mesh item um, of the imported assets, it will also convert the vertex normal data to the Art Edge workflow. So for instance, um, let's see, um, if I uh, open, uh, I mean, create a, a, a scene, uh, a sphere like this, and you set the polygons with the set vertex, uh, set vertex normal, you have a, a vertex normal data that is stored over here. And often with the CAD data, you have some vertex normal data stored. Um, and so, um, if I do things like this, okay, well, let's see, we will select a bunch of different areas, not this way, probably better. Okay. So now I will just set the vertex normal on this. I'll probably reset. Okay. Clear. I will set the vertex normal over here. hide the wireframe or oh, I don't have the mm, let me see just okay vertex normal tools we'll harden this delete the vertex normal okay so now we have this kind of shade and from this the cat data is setting the vertex normal and so you have just a vertex normal and those vertex, vertex normal are shaded like this. Mm. Okay, so we have some kind of a split of those uh, faces. Okay, and so you can convert the uh, the vertex normal data with this function over here with the vertex normal tools to convert to art edge. So if you clear the smoothing and remove the normal uh, the normal map you will still keep oops sorry you will still keep the hard edge so this is something that you might uh, also create from the solidworks file so we will take a look and start uh, i will just delete this now um, and uh, launch the the example so let's see um, once you have defined the preset, you, look, you click here, you have the launch patch process. It will open up um, a directory. You, you have to choose and look for the files. So in my case, um, it's under... Okay, I'm finding the location. One moment. Kids training okay training scenes so over the training scenes um i have the cat tools not the cat tools i have to go to the batch one okay so that's the files for the batch one so here i have a, a folder with some uh, sld prt files i'll open this with the in a in a new uh window okay so we have those solidworks file okay right and so 
every one of those will be open and treated as I said. So I select the folder. What's going on? Okay, I have, I have something. Okay, it will give me the pop-up every time, but that's probably something that I can bypass. It's creating the files, as you can see here. We have the LXO file of the different SLDPRT stuff. So you have to check what is it's going on here, but it's processing the data. As you can see, they are changing. I'm not enough closer to the object, but yeah, it's processed. So now I can go and go to file open recent. And as you can see, the SOLIDWORKS file have been opened. And so for instance, I opened this one and this is the file from the SOLIDWORKS file uh, that was uh, opened. And now the vertex normal is, is still there, but I can, as, well, as I said, uh, convert it. Uh, that's probably the, the command I was talking about. So this one might have some issue. I have to check. Um, so yeah, you, you have this. And so in the scene, that have been created you see you have the default camera you have the light you have the object that is still as a static mesh that's probably why i couldn't edit it um, so this is one thing i have to check and so if i change this to mesh type and not static mesh i can edit it as it was the case cannot see correctly I mean the, the icon it should be gray but I don't know if that's gray or, or blue uh, it should be blue okay so I can convert the vertex normal and now I have the hard edges so if there is some split into the into the object you can get them back you see it's preserved so as I said, uh, with the preferences, you can probably add different kind of uh, commands uh, and um, commands from kits, from other kits, or as well those that I've made. For instance, I have um, I have the cleanup tools that can be uh, useful for that. So, for instance, here we have a scene that is composed by a mesh, a light, and a default camera. You have also a group, but I don't care about the group uh, on my side. If I want to create some kind of a repository of the files and have them completely clean up, I can probably launch the command for deleting the cameras. It directly delete the camera. And this function uh, is in the history. So for instance, here, if I copy this command, and put this uh, into the preferences of the batch one. So I will open back the batch. Let's see, we will close the scene. I will open the preferences and instead of this one, that was apparently um, breaking, I will add this and add another one to delete the light. This is just one example, but there's a lot of you, you, you can do uh, probably with the current commands that I have. So it's running linearly, uh, line after line, the different commands, right? So here we have this. I have the SOLIDWORKS files as an input, the LXO file as an output. I will, uh, I will have to check uh ah yes i have to just delete the files because we have already a nelixo folder okay so now it's deleted i can launch the batch process and now it it will probably work that's probably something i have to check again but it seems to process things without any kind of error so it means if things are running correctly, 
it didn't have the time to show uh, the files. So now we are still in the default scene. Okay, no, nothing has changed. But now if I'm opening the file, the elixir file from uh, for the for the object, now you can see that the scene is not composed uh, with uh, any light cameras. They have been deleted with those commands. So um, yeah, that's that's something that is probably um, possible. I mean, you can imagine that you have opened the file, you have a, um, a command, and I I mean, you can even find it uh, with the undo undo uh, command. So for instance, when you are uh, in the um, item. Uh, menu, you can go to trans, uh, not trans, trans type, but select, sorry, select item type and meshes, and you select the mesh. But actually, there are not static mesh. There, there are not meshes, there are static mesh. So, this is why also I have these options to convert the convert meshes to static mesh, but that's the opposite on the SolidWorks. I have to check this. Mm. Yeah, the one thing that I noticed, like, is when you open the the if you open the solid the solid native, if you look in the shader tree, it, mm -hmm. it, because it's like SolidWorks doesn't have the yeah the exact same one to one, but in the shader tree, you know, it doesn't have a uh, final color output or a shader shader object yeah object yeah so those have to be added uh, yeah um once once you import it. Mm -mm, totally, but of course, uh, as I said, uh, from from my the command, I mean the script that I've made to the command that are inside Modo, you can probably add this. So, for instance, you have all opened the scene, we've deleted the cam, the light, and when we are uh, okay, so we'll open the command, the command history, not filter anything, but see the history over here. And um, with the undo, just, and we will click on here and add a shader, right? So if we click on shader, we are adding the shader, right? And this is just this command over here. So you can paste this here and it will create the shader directly. You see what I mean? So as you have this kind of presets, and this, yeah. this preset is just a file, uh, uh, a um, a Python file, but, but that's really simple. I will open it on the side uh, to show you. Um, let me see. So that's under the kids one batch. And we have the macro for the presets. Okay, so we have the presets for the SolidWorks. So let me see. Open in. Uh, okay, I will open the file. Okay, so we have the the file. So under the monster kits, then batch macro small batch etc. I have this file. I will just open it with basic Notepad uh, plus plus not PyCharm will be complex, but you can see here. You have. All the different lines for the different lines that you have here right so you can copy this and paste it over here in the field and you have your your own macro for dedicated stuff right so this is not that much complex uh, to to create or I mean to 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 prepare by yourself uh, at least you have the ability to change the different lines over here so it means that you can do your own stuff if you wish. Okay. Uh, don't know if I if that's what you was uh, looking for, but there's probably some solution over here. I mean, from my side to as well your side and other um, third-party developers, or if you have other kids that can do this directly. So, for instance, I have also here, um, as you can see, we have created the shader, but automatically Modo is selecting it. So it can sometimes uh, stop uh, the, the, the ability to create another things because you have already a selection, so, so something like this. 
but I have some commands as well uh, to uh, remove the selection. So if I search for um, deselect, I have this command that is called small gc deselect all. And once I'm launching it, it just deselects things. So you can as well add this one over here, uh, not this one, uh, here, this one. So deselect all and then again and again. You have 20, 20 lines. <laughs> I can add more, but this is just one example. Sure. Okay. Sure. I guess I think, um, you know, the, my, the one journey I've been on is kind of figuring out, you know, what are the different pathways to go from the different CAD packages? Yeah. Model. So that is, a, you know, much, and some of it is like, you just need to do a rendering. Do you need to do an animation or do that's you completely a different work? work. Yeah, totally it's a different workflow. And um, well, so for instance, in the SOLIDWORKS, if you are talking about SOLIDWORKS, but probably others, uh, they are probably working like this. So you see in, in the, the statistics uh, under polygons, you have the part tags and you can convert the part tags to a material. Uh, I, I don't have this uh, on my side. Uh, but for instance, here we, we know we have the material that is the same for all this piece. So I, that's probably not the best example because there's apparently only one material onto this one. But you can convert things with other kits and scripts. Probably William uh, Vaughan have some, some script for this as well. Um, I have other kind of stuff like this. So if you want to split the mesh with the different parts, so for instance, if I click here, I will split the different elements as different meshes uh, regarding the, the, the part tags that are on the side. So now we have yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, how, because this kind of... In, I basically, in, so in that way, when I do the material tags, so that comes across in Modo, mm -hmm. that gives me, like you're saying, a selection set. Yeah, I there's split, this also. I split, mm -hmm. split the model apart by the material tags. Yeah. So yeah, mm, that that's pretty challenging, but it, it depends, uh, of course, if you are changing from many different uh, CAD uh, CAD files. I mean CAD uh, softwares. It can be really tough. But yeah, that's <laughs> there's not so many automatic uh, um, automatic uh, solutions. There's some uh, on the Unity side. So now that Unity uh, have both uh, uh, PI, PI XYZ um, uh, solution uh, from the French as well, uh, it's, uh, it's available. Uh, you can load many different kinds of files and then uh, open um, open them and convert them to the various uh, types of uh, output um, from the from the FBX to other uh, kind of things. So for instance, I will just open PI, but this this kind of things is, I mean, you, you have to pay for it, right? Uh, PI XYZ. That's the solution that they've uh, Post recently that that's about one and a half year I think, and the plugin and the and the, the the software is great for this because it helps you creating different LODs. So for instance, if you are working with real time content, that's probably better uh, not probably not the good the best solution for you if you are you are just doing I mean, just doing rendering and uh, animations uh, uh, for rendering. That's probably be not the, the best solution, but there are some tools in it that prevent you uh, about the, the tessellation or those kind of things as well. Because yeah, if you are, okay. if you have the file. The, um, the power, the, uh, power translator. Uh, yeah, there's, the, there's this as well. In, mm. in a long time. And I've, I've spoken to the, to that team from Integrity where, and it, I don't know what has been taking so long. It's been something that they said it's they have a new version coming sometime soon, but you know, that's been like at least the past like three <laughs> years, four years. I've been hearing that from them. 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe there also there's there's deeper change uh, between the, the the releases. I mean, Moto is changing, the, uh, the SolidWorks is changing as well. So when you are right, trying to keep up, <laughs> yeah, trying to keep up is is really tough. <laughs> As well on my side, as you can see, sometimes things can 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 break up because there's a new uh, function or the function has been modified by the, the 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 creators of the of the software. So yeah, it can can create some kind of struggle sometimes. Um, like it seems like it it, would, it makes sense, and this is just what I think of for me, just in Moto, like if they would start to open up to be able to import more, you know, CAD files. Yeah, I I think there's a lot of uh, usage. I mean, in in the, I mean, with Moto, with the CAD files, and especially for product designers and and person that are creating the the renderings of, of those. Um, don't know. Um, there there there's also other tools. Uh, I I want just I'm just gazing uh, at things, and I was thinking about this. Uh, you have also this solution to rebuild a, um, a poly strip, uh, and this one is can, can be interesting. So, for instance, here we have a bunch of polygons. We can uh, change this to the boundary and remove this and this. And now, from this uh, triangulated uh, setup, we can uh, rebuild this with a poly strip. So I can define a count. So for instance, I will say, okay, we want uh, 16, um, 16 steps, I mean, 16 side and uh, set circle mode. Uh, don't know, I don't cannot remember all of these options. And so it creates this kind of patch that was uh, recreating the, the, yeah, we have 16 polygons and it recreate the patch that was previously like this. So, yeah, th this one was uh, Andy at some point. So of course you have sometimes to flip some some elements for, to to keep the corner, of course. And probably at the first I should do this first before launching it. So if I flip this, okay. So now it's better this way. So I have to check, I have this and this. So I have two paths of polygon um, of edges selected. And then I run uh, with the preset, just keeping this over here. That's the ribbon uh, tool like this. And yeah, okay, we need the 20 and we have 20 polygons. And now it's matching. It can be uh, helpful when you are creating some some object that uh, should have uh, a regularity in in the polygons. So of course, yeah, that 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 can be useful. I mean, if, especially when you are creating this kind of ob object for real time, you have for sure have to uh, lower the uh, amount of polygons, and so yeah. But the 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 result can be can be useful as you can see. It have a, a sample that is regular all, all across the, the the line, but and this kind of things is uh, that's something I, I wanted to do at first when I started to do the scripting, but of course it was too tough. But um, I'm I'm enough uh, in, interest into also as well the mashups that I've made an assembly. And from that assembly, I called a script that load the assembly. The assembly is processing the data, and then I get back the data as a destructive uh, workflow. So what, when I'm when I'm I'm sending this uh, this uh, setup, uh, I am sen sending the file with just the, the polygon selection and as well the, the edges sections so you can totally do this with uh, with a mesh up right you can define the selection and do the the the, node, the, the nodding with with all the stuff into the schematic but <laughs> it takes time so in right. i mean i wasn't enough and i'm still in a uh, not enough um 
powerful on the mathematic uh, sides of the programming to create this by myself entirely. So I'm getting some data uh, via a script uh, and sending this to another scene by loading uh, an assembly. And so you didn't see the process, but usually it's opening a new scene. It's loading the data with a copy paste or this kind of things, and then processing the data and get back the data onto the main scene. So it's completely hidden, but it, it helps a lot. So using also the, the meshups for the, the scripting purpose can be really interesting as well. There's a lot of potential here. Like you are creating some kind of an HDA in, in Udini, you can just call it when you when you need, and yeah, it's just it's just not present uh, anymore. But it's destructive, but it it's still useful for that. So yeah, I think that's one of the things that, to your point, like you know, I'm still trying to wrap my head around mesh ops. Like, I, you know, it's very powerful. It, trying to find a, a starting point and just you get lost like what are the <laughs> methods and the reason why you might do something at a certain time is is kind of the, the thing i'm still trying to figure out at this point uh-huh i understand totally um it's pretty in i think that that i think the foundry you know just in general in the uh, to, uh, some tutorials you know to really dive in to the, the reasons why you do things that is a mesh op in a certain way or a certain functionality at a certain time, I think would be really helpful. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I, I try to make some, but <laughs> I have some kind of a, a difficulty to start, uh, I mean, start doing things with, with probably a goal that is achievable, right? But at some point, you start doodling with, with the mashups and you, you start finding new things and <laughs> you start moving and sliding on, on another area. Um, so yeah, probably that's not the best example for myself. Um, but doing, uh, doing some training and f f this is the kind of a typical example where, where mashups can be useful, right? I mean, you have to pro process some data over and over again with the same kind of setup, um, do it with the mesh ops and even script, uh, make a script to, to call it and, and, and do this uh, in, a, in just a second. But of course it's intimidating uh, at the first. Um, I have to check here. And yeah, so if that's something you really need, I, uh, uh, I could also as well do those those kind of things. But this is something probably Foundry should do uh, by themselves because they can. Yes, they definitely should do by themselves. I mean, it takes a lot of time to to set up an organized um, presentation with the, sh the 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 mashups because it can be really tough in terms of schematic. And I mean, I prefer to work in the schematic. That's my own point of view. Even if you have the the the, the mesh up system with the whoops I didn't see it over here yeah the stack uh, of the mesh ups over here because at some points uh, you have uh, you need more control to uh, link things with uh, other elements so it depends but sometimes you have to to, to bring some input data as an integer or as uh, another edge count or something like this. And so you have to dig with the schematic, but at some point it can be real mess. Uh, there's a lot of potential uh, behind it, but also as well, I'm, I really wish uh, that they, they can um, give some, some possibility to pull the, the mesh ops uh, as, a, as a file, really. Uh, because if it could be a file, then you can update the file, so update the polygon, the, the, the mesh ops itself, and then uh, propagate the, the, the result on another scenes, for instance. Um, it could be really tough maybe to code and, and to create uh, as a new feature, but it could be 
so much faster and so much interesting. Um, so yeah, don't know what you what you think uh, about this uh, Volker, but there's a lot of potential. But it it looks like, I mean, the step are there, but we are just one step behind the end of the of the stairs, right? <laughs> At sometimes, yeah. You're talking about the overt reference system, which we still don't have. Yeah, the reference system, like. An HTA system or a prefab system, like in Unity, when you are using the prefabs, um, yeah. and also you can share things much easier. I mean, you, you can use and call some assembly aliases into uh, into uh, different uh, situations, um, but you are quite probably uh, calling it into a specific scene, and probably you will changing. Uh, change uh, the, the the scene over uh, over the time and once you, you you have to go back and probably update this with a new system with a new, a new mesh ops you have to unlink re relink again the different uh, elements it's not like you are updating a link to a uh, to a file that is on your on your storage on your web server or anything like this so in regards to that uh it's not that much convenient um and i wish they they, they can they can do this uh differently yeah, fingers, fingers crossed <laughs> yeah fear crossed um yeah I'm usually a patient guy when it comes to these kinds of things but uh just lately i, I would have been in bad uh, in really bad use of uh working reference system that's why i had high hopes in usd which comes to s with a, a bit yes, or, or but the the USD is, is just a destructive one. I mean, if you are talking about the mesh ops, that's a specific one, right? I, I mean, USD as a file system. Yes, as, as yeah. We are, we are just using USD as some kind of geometry file format for being imported and exported, it's just like a, a pimped up uh, OBJ or FBX with, with not much more benefits in it. So. Usually, uh, w w when you have when you're covering the whole USD, uh, what it's what it's capable of, you can even stream geometry and just uh, have it as a reference and not editable geometry, but just in, in an instance, you can really load really heavy geometry in your scene. Uh, we had something similar similar when you're when I've been working with WeWay, you can even reference complete scenes so you still had to create your scene and you have to export it as vr scene file but you can you were able to import this reference i was i was importing a whole a garden with all the the trees and the grass and plants and the car in it and everything and the 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 footprint in the the, the viewport in moto was like zero i just had a bounding box but whenever i was pressing uh, render the, i was able to see the whole scene because it was loaded at render time. Totally. Um, I just wanted to show this, but probably that's not the best solution uh, to do this uh, on a public stream. But yeah, anyway, uh, it, it could it could be interesting uh, as a topic. Uh, we have probably about twenty minutes more, about thirty minutes. Here I will uh, stop the the stream. But okay. Let me see. I will uh, open one of the the project we are working on uh, actually uh, at Xtriper, my my company, uh, the company I working I'm working uh, here in South Korea, and we are creating some VR stuff um, for uh, an application for safety uh, of the the, the fishermen uh, trawlers. Um, so let's see. I will. Also, another thing with the with the mesh ops is that even if you have the deferred uh, update over here, uh, when you are editing things, it refresh all and the whole different uh, meshes into the scene. That's not just the the the, the part that is linked to what you are editing uh, actually. So the whole scene is re re-evaluated, and so uh, yeah, 
it can be a, a, a tough a tough um, tough job <laughs> so yeah that's not fast for that for, for that kind of uh, things okay so let's see um here oh, i okay. have uh, i don't know mm. if, you, if you know but one thing i'd like that was a nice addition in i think is 16 is that um they're able to open rhino files native yeah i didn't try this yet because i'm not working with the cad but continue yeah interesting yeah so what's what's interesting about that is rhino now has subdivisional modeling inside of it mm -hmm. so it's possible to in rhino change the the the, the cad data the, the the b rep cad nerves data into sub d inside of rhino so that when you drag and drop the file into moto um it, it comes in in some respects a lot cleaner mm -hmm. than just like you know if you had like a step file or i just file or you know a cat a cad file like that so rhino has very interestingly become kind of like a new i was always using it but it's become now kind of like my go between sometimes mm -hmm. files into moto yeah um that's that that could be a a, a good workflow uh i mean showcase it uh we can bounce on it <laughs> on this and, and and talk about it uh later on you you have some plans maybe uh to um okay probably for for another tr another stream we can uh, imagine yeah. uh having some example scene and try to do things with uh with those yeah, I would I would like to do that. I, I would like to do that sometimes. Is just uh, yeah, show some examples. Um, you know, just like I said, the different workflows and different ways that that it's been. You know, you can potentially optimize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, either like through the kit or just drag and drop. You know, these different methods because again, that's there's there's so many different ways to skin the cat coming into moto and some of it again like i said depends on what do you need to do with the geometry you know once once you're once you're in moto so for instance here uh when you was talking about the the, the performance and those kind of things here is a good example um that environment is for vr uh, experience so you are usually uh I mean, it's set in order to be used like this when you're on the on the desk and you are moving on the desk. So um, the amount of polygon is not that huge. I mean, all the different PCs are uh, pretty small in terms of polygons. Even if I, I've uh, decided to do the, the micro bevel uh, um, workflow, I, I really like this uh, from different various uh, points, but yeah, I, I do the, done this, and so even if the the number of polygons are not that high, uh, it's struggle uh, because the amount of object is about one thousand seventy hundred seven hundred. I will check. Uh, select uh, select the meshes. Okay, so when I select all the meshes, yes, we have about. 2000 or so uh, items and so even if all of those have a, a transform that is just zero 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 uh, and they are separated for for occlusion curling purpose in 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 unity uh it's struggle right i mean when you are looking inside this of course you can change it to um to static mesh but w when you are working like like when I'm usually doing is okay I'm looking at this and see okay I have to edit this area because it's correctly uh, shaded uh, then I have to edit it and so I have to change from uh, the regular mesh to the static mesh so for instance here there is no merging or blending between the different uh, elements so do I have to uh, open the item list select the object change it to um to a, to a mesh instead of a static mesh and even when you are with a static mesh here you have probably the double uh, double the amount of uh, fps but not, not that much 
So yeah, you you call the command, you yeah, smooth normally, things, and yeah. Normally, you you're taking yourself into Unity. You're not going into Unreal, or do you have a preference, or do you use both? Um, I'm mainly uh, focused on Unity because most of the developers in, in, in our company are working with this. Um, we have some researchers that are looking for uh, Unreal Engine, but uh, it depends on the um, on the product we are making. Uh, there's a lot of products uh, running on the HoloLens as well as on mobile uh, smartphone, uh, from AR content to uh, uh, normal, uh, I should say, virtual uh, environments. So actually, uh, Unreal Engine is much more dedicated to the VR content or those kind of things. And it, it was not uh, the, the, the choice on, on our side. But anyway, uh, yes, you can you can edit and move the different elements uh, uh, um, in Unity and, and lay out your things into Unity or Unreal. But at some point, sometimes you have to to to, to get a um, get the work inside model. So, for instance, here, even if those are just elements that are separated from the rest of the panel, uh, they have to be stitched. Uh, in some ways, and so I made the script for the project and fuse, especially for that, because I was doing this on every different parts. Uh, but that's that was a choice also as well. Um, uh, I was in need to um, remove sometimes the normal map for various purposes for the performances at some times. Uh, so getting this kind of micro bevel uh, setup was great because even if you are at a long distance you still see some kind of an highlight and you 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 clearly see the the connection between the different elements there, there's a lot of paint over on on those kind of boats i, I didn't uh, showcase show the the texture here but yeah this is one thing that i wanted to achieve and so Everywhere where you see those kind of tubes, they are all connected. Um, and so it, it makes, uh, I mean, it gives the feeling that everything is correctly connected and there's no floating things. So I was looking at this. Um, right. Don't know if I can cancel the GL meter. Didn't try this on a stream. Uh, so yeah, okay, it's working. I will just make a make a test. So we are launching the GL meter. When I'm moving the uh, on the screen, we are at about 18, 19 FPS. If we select all the meshes and change them to static mesh. I, I shouldn't even uh, move the, the viewport with the selection because it will be probably 8 FPS. <laughs> um, and this is something we have to... Oh, I, I didn't change it correctly. I missed it. Sorry. This again, change type. Static mesh. Okay, so static mesh means that you are not editing uh, the object anymore. But at least you can see it on the viewport. It takes some time. There's a uh, yeah about two thousand uh, items. And yeah, at some point you are you are you and you need uh, as well in in the in the game engine to merge things together, of course. But here, okay. So now we are at about forty FPS. 37, 40 FPS. Uh, it's not probably visible on the on the stream because the FPS is not the same. But yeah, you have a, a lot better uh, feedback over here. But maybe it can be uh, something um, that can be uh, automatized. So once you are selecting an object, probably it means that you are, you will edit it, and so. Uh, blindly, uh, model can change the, the 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 state of the of the object from static mesh to mesh, 
and then you edit things, then you go back, you select another, and it changed this one to a static mesh. And once you have selected this one, it's it changed this one to a mesh for editing. We can imagine this kind of of system. Uh, I'm not the developer, <laughs> of course, but yeah, this is something that could be uh, possible, <laughs> maybe. Don't know. There's a lot of things to do right here. The problem with those fine types is that they are destructive. As soon as you're converting something into a static mesh, it's going to be triangulated and it's not editable anymore. At least for my yeah, opinion. yeah, I see what I see what you mean. But here, for instance, I'm in the static mesh. I can ch change the type back to mesh, okay, and I can edit it again. But of course, this one is triangulated, and we lost everything. Or it can be maybe something that can uh, that can be um, I can say some kind of um, like the LOD when you are uh, in Unity you can get the LOD zero one two and so that's different kind of files you see like a proxy um, so you can get some kind of a sort of a proxy that is I didn't th there are some other proxy kind of uh, yeah convert to proxy uh, uh, yeah, we, didn't we try have those. A normal, we have a normal uh, proxy that is just referencing to a, an, uh, a different file, and it's uh, yeah, or something like this. You can mm. only point to a single mesh item. So if you have a, a complex assembly, you can only pick one mesh item out of it. And uh, then we have a, a deferred mesh as well, but this converts the whole mesh in a complete different file format, which is a uh, LX. P or something like that. And yeah. It's not um, anymore. Yeah, yeah, I see. One way road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so. I, I need, uh, I need, I'm, I'm working a lot with uh, quads and uh, NGON files, so I'm not using real time stuff, so I'm usually doing it for offline rendering. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to destroy my files by triangulating them because in the most cases I have to edit them and scale them and and for me for for my type of work the texturing of N ngons works pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just or, saying that it, it can be sometimes some something that can be totally hidden and, and not visible from the user point of view, but uh, behind the scene. Uh, Modo can can create some kind of a proxy that is just a static mesh of the the current object, and then if you edit it, it will recreate and update this proxy just for the visualized purpose. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just for the for the shape itself, uh, it can be just for that, but it can still work uh, this way. So don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's that, that, that's the, the the general problem with uh, with every tool and work with, with proxies. So in most cases, uh, we, we in Moodle we have the unique situation where you can have uh, a reference file as, as a where you can have several files open, which is not common in other DCCs. So usually you have to open various instances of your program. So in Moodle it's like uh, when you, when you're referencing a scene, you can't have the same scene open in Moodle itself. So you have to open a different instance of Moodle, open the reference. So it's a, it's a yeah bit, uh, difficult like this. So what you're asking for is you're actually you're pointing at some kind of proxy file, but you will also want to be able to open the proxy file, edit it, <laughs> save it. <laughs> and then the the link is going to be updated. Yeah, or something like like, like the, the 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 setup. I mean, the prefab system in, in in Unity. You can open the prefab. So a prefab is just like a, an assembly, right? And yeah. you open it into the the same space. So like when you are in Modo and you open another another scene, you can open it and see it on the side. So for instance, I will try it. <laughs> I don't know if I can try, but I would try. Why not? And so you can turn the visibility. So now I, I see the first scene and the second scene is there. Okay, with the root that I was selecting. So I can see this element that is into this scene, but I can see also this one that is on the other scene. So there's some, I don't know. <laughs> 
I think we can we can just wait for some some uh, explanation from the developers or and we can we can we can get some comments uh, on the video about this. <laughs> I hope. So yeah, in this kind of situation where you you can have something into a scene and you have another one still visible, but there are two different scenes. This is something I really like in in model when you are opening some, something uh, into the world space, you can still keep the, the visibility of it. And it was interesting for the for the boat, for instance, when I was creating the different assemblies for the different pieces, um, I was able to stay in a, in a, in a, in a specific view and ba go back and forth on different scenes and still get the, the reference and the, the same point of view on the different scenes. This is something that is really interesting. Okay. Um, any other questions, topics? That's a good. That's a good stream. Uh, I I like to get some uh, guests uh, over here, and not not bad one, right? <laughs> that's clear. For Volker, I I couldn't say uh, more. I mean. That's great what you are doing. Um, so yeah, can, what else can I do uh, or explain? May, maybe there is some topics here. I will just continue on this. I just really have to dig a, li a little bit into your tool set uh, because it's, it's, it's uh, somehow a little bit overwhelming. What? Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, why it's called monster. <laughs> yes, monster. It, it looks like yeah, that's difficult to see the eyes and the and the arms. Where are all that stuff? That's about the shine, like the thing you where you see when the <laughs> movie is. Is it's probably this? I should choose this uh, as an image, as a logo. <laughs> the thing <laughs> should re rebrand it. Um, anyway, so I, I was also thinking about. Uh, showcasing other stuff. Uh, this is something that I really like because that's not that much complex. But yeah, those kind of tools that I've made also uh, as well on the Mifaboma uh, tools. Um, so that's over here. We have a, a bar with different commands. And so for instance, here we have some kind of a, a hierarchy with the different elements and we have a locator that is completely off in space and in a specific location and rotations. And I can uh, create an array from the various uh, positions. So from the local mode or the world mode or the parent. So if I do uh, this on the local mode over here, I can radial array this around his own, um, his own center. So we will do this onto the X axis. And we can as well uh, merge it if we are in polygon mode. So I will do this in item mode. And here we are with just four elements. And so we have a preset and we have already the setup with the instance this way. Uh, that's really simple. And you keep the child with these options. And you can even do this with as a copy instance or replica. Um, so something I really like to to use as well when when working um so for instance here okay i will do this over here so we can now do the function with the parents uh, i will do this with the polygon mode so we have the polygon mode selected and we will do a radial not radial sweep radial array but this time on the locator so we have an offset uh, axis. Uh, what was the axis? I have to check. Okay, so that's the x axis again. Just to check this after I launch it. Okay, so from the parent on the x axis, I can duplicate this four times. And so I have this. It's the same mesh. I mean, the mesh is still there and the center is still there, but the duplications and the array have been made relative to the parent locator. 
this is something I really like to, uh, like to use. Uh, that's not a new stuff, but it, it can be really easy to, to use this way. Um, and so as well, this one uh, should be uh, probably created differently. Uh, what I can... I will open another scene. So you have also the flip one that can be useful. So you can flip on, on, on one axis. So local on the X. No more uh, changing the the scale and the mode and the scaling. Okay, I didn't have the negative. <laughs> Just the, those kind of things. Just with an easy command. <laughs> I was lazy to do this uh, time after time. So just flip on axis. Uh, and yeah, this way. Um, else there is the slice one. Uh, where I will open another one. So I keep the load spinning scenes over there. And then go to Mifanova. Okay. So. Radial sweep. Okay, so the radial sweep also is interesting. Um, so, for instance, you have this tube that is completely off on the screen. I mean, on the scene. I'll change this to automatic. Okay, so we have this inside the locator. So the body tube is inside this one. And we have this piece that is here, so we can radial sweep this polygon over the local uh, center. So to do this, I just use the radial sweep over here. I will click and uh, to remove uh, um, the selection of the polygon. So the radial sweep from I polygon can remove the object if you are starting from an eye polygon model and doing the low poly um so here we have this i can do the radial sweep local mode that's on the y we have probably 32 polygons and so it creates the mesh like that and we didn't have the polygon it was removed so really simple but Doing that kind of stuff can be easy this way. Um, doing the same thing over here. Okay. Whoops. Change the locations. Five. Okay. So this one is here now. And here I can probably as well do a radial sweep. It works also as well on the edge mode. So if I select just those and do a radial sweep. I will do this on local Y6. Well, something wrong here. That's the purpose of testing things. Okay, radial sweep Y6. Okay, it works. And so, yeah, you, you, can, you can use this kind of tools to uh, easily radial sweep or radial array things over uh, with a reference from the parent to the locator to even even the the, the world space if you will uh, so for instance here i have the polygon selected i will do the radial sweep but this time on the world mode so i will do this on the y six and so it creates a radial sweep from the location of the world so same thing with the parents and now it's from the parents the locator that was there that can be useful in many cases i mean for mechanical stuff like this it can be useful you can do this right here radial sweep on the parent, on the Z, we did this six times, boom. Very simple. You can even uh, define the preset of the the radial sweeps. So, for instance, here 
I have a 360 um, preset actually by default, of course, or 360 degrees. And you can even do uh, uh, 90 degrees on both sides. So, for instance, I will do 45 degrees on both sides. So it will do this. Um, here, radial sweep, local mode, on the Y, and four edges. So you have to check the, the flip part. Now we have we have the, the 90 degrees over here and it's ex extruding on both sides of the of this of this shape. So I can start doodling with this uh, probably radial array. I will do this on the parents with the Y. I can do 12, oh, not this one. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I have to move the bolt into the body tube, for instance. Okay, now it will work. So polygons, radial array, relative to parent, Y, and we will do this 12 times. And as we have this, we can start creating something like that. For instance, we have something linear. We should do this probably curve. And so, yeah, we start making this kind of elements this way. We we'll remove some of the elements over there. And we have this piece that we can then duplicate with the radial array tw uh, 12 times again. So parent, Y, 12 times. So if I do this, there there will be there will not be uh, connected. So again, selecting the polygons, I will do this in the, into the polygon mode. So radial array, twelve times, and so we have this. But now, as you can see, they are not connected, right? So in order to do this in just one one row, I have to check radial array relative to parent, but I don't have the solution for the merge. Okay, I have to check this and add it anyway. Selecting the boundary, selecting the vert, right click, merge, and boom. We have this kind of shape created just totally off <laughs> of the center of the of the world and it's working nicely. I have to probably to move this. I mean duplicate it. So I have the mirror as well. So the mirror also can be local, world, or uh, relative to parent. So in this case, we will do this local and on the Y. And boom, you have this. Simple. It's not even a, a pipeline, right? <laughs> Maybe a, an Art Deco uh, pipeline. Okay, I will stopped here uh, with the stream it was about one hour or so i hope you enjoy and Thank you very uh, much. yeah and i look forward to doing something again soon good good come back okay. that's that's right, uh, that's good. nice have a good day see you okay. see you out here okay see you okay so see you then um what I can say, um, of course, the this monster uh, is on GitHub. It's available on the Gumroad as well. You have everything uh, on the YouTube page or even on uh, my website. Uh, so, what else? What else? Uh, nothing more. Uh, model kits and plugins, and here you have all the connections with the documentation and all that stuff hope you enjoy see you next time we'll do a, another live stream probably on the next week uh, probably on the same time should be okay i will i will let you know see you bye bye